Hi, now I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how gouges are numbered and um, how they actually came up with the numbers. Um, it's very interesting because once you know this, it can be very useful in figuring out how you can use those gouges. Um, and um, so basically what uh, they have done is there's, if you consider a series of concentric circles, ooh, bumpy workbench. <laughs> okay, if you, if you consider a series of smooth, imagine that these are smooth lines. <laughs> Maybe it's time for me to sand the surface of my workbench, huh? Okay, anyway, <laughs> imagine that there is, <laughs> these are perfectly round circles. Okay, if you t start in the center and you draw a line, say from there, and basically you're gonna be identifying a, um, an angle, and whatever is inside that angle, that is a particular number gouge. Okay, so for instance, if you imagine that these bumps weren't there, you can kind of get an idea that is about, a number seven, I would say, maybe a number five, but anyway, let's see. Okay, so everything within this angle there is, let's just say a number five. Okay, so everything within this curve, as the width in millimeters gets wider, the radius actually increases. Okay, so let's just do another angle. Let's just go, f let's say from this line to this line. <laughs> okay, everything inside that angle is, let's just say that's a number three. Okay, so it's much flatter. Okay, so this would be, see, um, a three millimeter, six millimeter, 10 millimeter, 14, and it, as it goes up and in width, as it increases in width, the radius also increases, or the sweep of that curve. Okay, so in other words, if you take a number five, let's say, and you make that cut right into the wood with, a, let's say, a six millimeter, and you take a 14 millimeter and you make a cut right on top of that, it will not be the same radius. Okay, so, and I just wanna show you how that works from a carving perspective. Okay, so once you understand this, then you can actually use your gouges in particular ways um, and use the way that they have numbered. Uh, let's just say I've, I've gotten together groups of number fives and number sevens because they're gonna be the easiest ones to show the curvature. Um, the difficulty for me is the, um, um, Many of my tools are different brands and sometimes the fish tails end up being slightly different than the straight ones and just there's and just enough of a difference that they uh, There's just a little bit off. So it's not gonna be perfect, but hopefully you'll get the idea. So I've got number fives here and number sevens All right, so I've got quite a lot of each one. I tried to find um, ranging from three millimeter, six millimeter, all the way up to the largest one is a number, oh, it's a 50 millimeter, okay? I just wanna show it because it's a really cool tool. <laughs> and it's, oh, it's poor thing is rusted. Guess I haven't used it for a while. Um, speaking of that, uh, coat your tools with a little bit of oil, even if it's olive oil, any kind of oil, just coat them with it, which I really need to. So just, just a little tip on how to save your tools. Um, just wipe them down every once in a while. Don't let dust settle on them because that's what happens with mine. Dust settles on them, then the moisture in the air um, is absorbed by the dust and, the, um, and then it just gets rusted. So be nice to your chisels. Okay, so where was I? Um, I'm just gonna show you number five. I'm just gonna show you what's happening. So this is number five, five millimeter. Now I'm gonna make a cut right here. Go across the grain, it's easier to make solid cuts. That is a number five, 
five millimeter. Then I'm going to move up to the next size that I have in a five, and that is number eight. And this is a number five, ten. I'm going to hit it too hard because I'm going to split the wood out. All right, and then we've got a number 512. And then we've got a number 514. And a number 520. And that's actually going to sort of scoot a up a little bit from a 5. 14 to a 520, there's going to be a few more in there. So if I go right up there, do you see that's that radius doesn't match that. So I'm just going to scoot it up a little bit because we've got some missing ones. And then we've got the 520. Oops, it's the same thing. No, nope, 5. Let's see, we've got a 5. <laughs> Can't even see these. I don't use. Oh, these are both the same. 520. There we go. Put that one aside. Don't need that. And now we've got a 525, and that's going to scoot up it a little further. Okay, so you can see there's going to be some missing here. There's going to be, a, I believe that's a 516 and a 518. Okay, so, but if you can see that, that is a pretty close to, pretty close straight line. All right, and that is that angle. All of those are number fives. Okay, um, now I'm going to do the same thing with the number sevens. I actually have more of these. Okay, let's do these. Seven, three millimeters. Let's do this quickly. Seven, three, seven, six. And this is an antique one, so I'm not quite sure. Probably seven, ten, maybe. And this is probably a seven, twelve. Again, it's an antique one, so I just tried to match it. And we've got a 714. And a 716. And a 718. Seven twenty five is gonna jump up a bit further there. And a massive one, 750, which is way out here. <laughs> okay, so I don't know if that's going to be a straight line or not, but anyway. So that is all number sevens within there. So you can just take a look at it. Okay, so that's number sevens all the way up and just the ones that I have. And there's gonna be a point, when you think about that process, there's gonna be a point where a different number, let's say number five, is going to be exactly the same radius as a number seven, only it's gonna be just a different width. Okay, so there are points when, when certain numbers, as they get wider, they will match exactly the same radius as a different number. Okay, they're just different sizes. Uh, sometimes you can use that. Um, and um, there's also a really cool benefit of this, um, of why or what, what is happening as a result of this. Let me see if I can find a little blank spot on here. I'm just going to take number sevens. Now, if you were ever going to be doing a classical um, volute or spiral, that spiral, this is a great method to get that perfect spiral. And it is really cool if you actually end up <laughs> getting the right tools. Um, I actually had a student one time who had um, every single gouge from two millimeters all the way up to, I think, like a 35 millimeter number seven, so I could test it. And they were all one brand. They were all the uh, file Swiss made brand. Um, so I knew they were all going to be exact. There wasn't, wasn't going to be any variation from one size to the next. So, and I tested it. And what happened was if you start at the very first or the smallest one, right? And you make a continuous cut, make that. And then you take the next size up. That's a three millimeter. This is a six millimeter. And you make cuts 
continuous. And then the next size up, you should get a perfect spiral. Now, I'm not sure if that's why they ended up numbering this, them this way, um, or if that's just a really neat result, <laughs> because the old antique tools aren't numbered. They're just, um, they're not really identified in any way. You just have to know the curvature. So I think the, the numbers really started to um, come into the, the actual identifying probably only maybe 50 years ago. Um, I don't know. I'm not quite sure when that actually started, but so we are creating that Fibonacci scroll by taking that same, oops, let's see, but it will be creating an expanding spiral, expanding volute. Okay, and unfortunately, if I take the next one up, it's going to be a little too tight. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, so that's where I've had that big missing one where I have the um, <clears throat> this missing and that missing. So I think uh, uh, I need to sort of stop there. And if you aren't, um, <laughs> if you don't have exactly that curve, I'm just, I just grabbed the number 514. Now this was a seven, what was the last one I used? Okay, the 718. Now I'm using a 514, a little shorter, but it's probably similar radius. Yeah, it's a little flat. So anyway, that's where you can sort of mix and match. If you don't have all the tools, you can take one that's a little bit narrower or a little bit wider and to find that same radius. Uh, now, I know somebody out there, <laughs> and I, this is a challenge, <laughs> um, make a chart and figure out at what point does a number 514 match a number seven? At what width is a number seven and what width is a number five where they end up being exactly the same radius? And I know there's some sort of mathematical formula out there and you know that's probably one of those answers that tool makers will have. Maybe I'm heading to Germany soon so maybe I'll pick their brains on that one and figure out where is that fine line where they're where they end up connecting. Um, so anyway but if you ever wanted to make that really perfect little volute scroll, anything like for that ionic capital, um, anything that has, you, you really want to have an accurate um, spiral uh, appearance. Um, if you can get those numbers, that will continue. That really, really works. Works great with that. Um, so um, obviously it depends on how large that volute is. If you're going to make a big, um, you know, ionic capital with scrolls that big, you're going to probably use something like a uh, five or a number six, no, maybe four or number five curvature or yeah. So then the spiral itself is going to be much larger. You can use a, a number eight and make a really tight scroll. Um, so it really just depends on what you're looking for, but use that method, walk it along, try to get each of those tools as close as possible, a two, a two millimeter, four millimeter, six millimeter, about every other, you know, even number of millimeters and make that connection. And as long as they're, you know, comparable in size, <laughs> that should work. But anyway, I just wanted to explain that little, uh, little trick in how this has worked. Now, if you actually have shopped for tools, sometimes they actually have this chart where they, it looks like this type of, um, it's our triangular thing with a lot of lines, a lot of curved lines, and then you can identify it, but you can see right there how they are numbered. All the same number, the same sweep, but as they get wider, the um, curvature or the sweep increases. So anyway, hope that helps. Happy carving.